Perfect? Bang on my chest if you think I'm perfect. Go ahead, bang on it. No heart? You gotta have heart. Miles and miles of heart. This is Patchwork Heart Ministries Young Catholics Respond, brought to you by Breadbox Media. Now, here's your host, Bill Snyder. Thanks, Adam, and welcome to the program, everybody. I am Bill Snyder. This is Young Catholics Respond, and thanks so much for being a part of our uh, ministry and listening to today's program. I want to just give you a quick uh, plug for our Patreon account. Uh, We are doing some really amazing things with Fiat Ministry Network these days. We have some great premium content for you. Uh, We have two tiers. One is a premium video tier called Discover Your Mission, and the other one is a premium audio tier called Hear Your Faith. Uh, they're, they're just loaded with great content, and we really encourage you to check it out. Uh, $25 a month for the video tier, and then it's a $10 a month for your uh, audio-only tier. And you're going to get great content that's going to uplift you in your Catholic faith. Uh, please go ahead and give it a, uh, a, a listen or a view um, and, uh, and subscribe to us. Uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, though, talking about just our ministry today, because uh, I'm joined by my friend and co-host on uh, Sowing Hope, Anne DeSantis. She is also the director of the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation. And uh, in talking today uh, with her, uh, I I said, you know, we ought to do an episode uh, of Young Catholics Respond together that is kind of addressing this violence that is going out there in the world today. Uh, and, and we're just seeing it. It's so relevant. So thanks, Anne, so much for coming on and, uh, and talking about this tough topic uh, with me, because I know you're engaged in families in crisis, helping families in crisis uh, work through this. And man, our country is uh, really, really in crisis right now. It is, Bill. And it is very heartbreaking for so many people. And uh, I thank you for allowing me to be a guest on Young Catholics Respond and say hello to the listeners out there. And Uh, I do invite them to check out the foundation that I represent, as Bill mentioned, that I'm the director for the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. We're an outreach through a religious order. It's uh, called the Mercedarians, and I'm headquartered here. We're headquartered in the Philadelphia area, uh, but we're stationed in four sections of the United States. So uh, please check us out and, and see what we're doing, because that is our mission is helping families in crisis. And boy, there's a lot of that happening right now. Uh, Our website is nonatus.org. There's uh, two N's in the middle there. (laughs) It's uh, N-O-N-N-A-T-U-S.org if you want to check it out online. Thank you so much, Bill. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so let's just talk a little bit about what's going on in in, in the country and why why it's happening. Of course, uh, the trigger event uh, was uh, on May 25th with the um, with the George uh, Floyd um, you know massacre really I, you know you want to call it a massacre because it was uh, more than one person um, that was that was just kind of you know sitting you know standing by as this this guy was um, just crushed by a police officer's knee um, and it's just it's just very very sad. Um, you know, and, and certainly at least I, I stand with, um, all of those people, um, who are, who are protesting peacefully, um, this, this death of George Floyd, because, um, I think it points to a larger problem in our society. Wouldn't you say that? Yes, I would. And it was very heartbreaking to see the death of, of George Floyd. And my heart goes out to his family and, for racial injustice in our uh, society. And it has been heartbreaking to see the aftermath, although we know that the protests have been a good thing because standing up for your freedoms is something that we are all entitled to in our country. Uh, But I do want to say, Bill, and I know you and I have discussed this, that some of the other things that have happened, which are violent, and, and really hurting people, hurting their businesses, their families, and their livelihoods has been a very difficult thing to watch. I know for myself online and even on TV, uh, my heart goes out to all those people who are affected in that way. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I think, I, I think that um, there, there is a very um, distinct line that we draw between the protesting of this stuff peacefully and... Um, the violence 
that is stemming out of um, of this. And you know, I, I even think it goes to talk about um, anger in some in some regards, uh, and and how we can have um, righteous anger for what is uh, taking place in our society with with racism and and that uh, po- police brutality in some regards has been a tough topic um, over the years and it really has never been solved. There's really never been a um, focus on it. You know, there's a few cases every year or more than a few cases every year and nobody seems to address it. So we have to have a righteous anger at, at that. Um, but, but, but when it spills over into damaging people's property, um, and, and, you know, we're not forgetting too, I, you know, I was sitting on the sofa and with uh, my wife, uh, the, the other night and said, the coronavirus seems to be over. The pandemic seems to be over. Um, but, you know, jokingly, of course, because, you know, we're still in the middle of this pandemic or, you know, we don't even know if it's the middle, but we're still, you know, suffering through a pandemic. And, um, you know, the, there's been a lot less focus on the news on that now. So, um, you know, what are, what are some of your thoughts on, on just on just the anger of this all and then also, you know, trying to focus our energy on productive ways to solve these societal problems. Thank you, Bill. Well, as you were saying what you were just saying, I was thinking and praying about my response. Uh, Peace begins in our own hearts, in our human hearts, and our interactions with people who are around us. Um, The Lord was not one for war. Although, yes, we know that there's the instance in Scripture where he turned over the tables and Uh, chased everybody out of the temple area. Uh, But that's not what I don't think what we're seeing right now as far as the aftermath of the uh, protests, uh, because some of that is not really, uh, some of it is, well, any violence is not really uh, righteous anger in that respect. Uh, So we have to look at that piece is that it's not of God when you lash out at people, innocent people. I mean, innocent people's lives that are being affected uh, from some of these um, violent uh, reactions after the protests. So that's where my heart goes out to right now as well. In addition to, of course, uh, the family of of George Floyd and all those who are uh, mourning that his death and the racial injustice there. Um, But peace begins in our own hearts. And I think our interactions that we have with people on a daily basis do mean something. So if, if you're listening to this and there is somebody that you are at odds with, this is the time to reach out to those people in your life that you are uh, hating for no reason, whoever they are, <laughs> white, black, I mean, whatever their religion, uh, creed, it, th- this isn't the time to uh, continue to have division between your brothers and sisters. So that would be my, my thoughts on it so far. Yeah, you know, I, you're. I think you're totally right, Anne. Um, when it comes down to um, this, you know, this is a time for us to seek reconciliation with our brothers and our sisters. Um, and, and by the way, that includes all races, all creeds, all colors, everything. Uh, you know, we we are one human family. We're all made in the image and likeness of God, and as such. As such um, chosen, you know, sons and daughters of the Most High God, therefore we have to um, seek to live like He lived, as as you kind of pointed out, Anne. We have to seek to live like Jesus lived, and that means that we have to foster uh, reconciliation. We have to foster peace, and you know, these are not just you know buzzwords that that we're throwing out here you know i mean uh, i feel oftentimes you know uh, radio hosts or, or people can just throw out a whole bunch of buzzwords and they, they think oh that's a great <laughs> a great show no this is not just a bunch of buzzwords it's not as just talking you know uh to fill airspace this is a real conversation about okay now what do we do how do we achieve reconciliation in our in our what are what are the constructive ways 
to build this. It, it, it certainly isn't, you know, uh, destroying somebody's business. It certainly isn't throwing, uh, you know, Molotov cocktails at police officers. All of, all of that is, you know, wrong, 100% wrong. Yes. Right. But, but what are the constructive ways that, that we can do it? You know, Ann, you mentioned it starts in our own home. It starts in our own home. So if there are people you're odd, at odds with in your own home, Make the reconciliation begin. You know, it's like that song we hear in church, right? Uh, we heard it for uh, several several years uh, when I was growing up as a kid. You know, let there be pe- let there be peace on earth, and, and and you know, and it begins with me, right? And let it begin with me. And 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 we hear that song every once in a while still. And we we need we need to recognize that it starts with us and our own human hearts. Um, but but culturally, there there has to be some steps too, and so. Um, we just we just pray for our civic leaders. We pray for our activists that are working uh, very hard at this time to unify people, to bring them together, um, and and help grow um, this this movement uh, that has been now sparked by this death. Right, and and uh, hopefully it will bear uh, new fruit. Hopefully it will bear new fruit in this movement for e- for for equality and justice for everybody. Um, you know, and that's the other thing too, Anne, right? Like this, as, as a Catholic, we, uh, we believe as Catholics that the entire, um, you know, human race is equal from conception until natural death. It doesn't matter what color creed you are, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's what it means to be Catholic, really. I mean, is our, our faith in Christ and our relationship with God and with the church, uh, and the fact that we believe in uh, heaven, we believe that there is the resurrection of the body and, and how important it is to live a good life of virtue. So when you see people kind of behaving in ways that it doesn't seem that the Ten Commandments even exist, uh, I know that it makes some of us uh, question, you know, what's going on, God? You know, what, why is this happening? But this is where we need to really hold on to our faith. Mm. Because, you know, God is doing something good in the end. Now, how long is that going to take? I, I don't know. Uh, we, we, we hope it takes sooner than later, right? Yeah. But, Bill, I think you and I were just talking about this yesterday. Our faith is not a magic wand. You know, we, we, we can't gather around with a group of our friends and expect that when we walk away from that uh, charismatic prayer session that, you know, God is going to make everything better right away. Right. And, and I know I've learned that lesson myself. But it doesn't mean that he can't work in our hearts. That's where he works. Yeah. You know, my prayer should be directed to change us. And through changing us, we can go out and make a difference for others. And I just pulled up this quote from St. Teresa of Calcutta. And I know we, you and I always uh, quote her during our show many times. She says, what I can do, you cannot. What you can do, I cannot. But together we can do something beautiful for God. So when we all work together with our gifts and talents, right? You hear that word a lot in Catholic language, gifts and talents, but that's what it's all about. We use our gifts and talents to help others because you know, you see what's going on out there in the world and you wanna jump in and do something about it. And you can, you can through your prayers and sacrifices. Thanks, Bill. No, this is great. We have have to take that short break here, uh, but when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Ann DeSantis. Again, today uh, we're talking uh, about uh, just the crisis that we're experiencing with violence in our society uh, stemming off of the the George Floyd death. So right back after these messages here on Young Catholics Respond, I'm Bill Snyder. Stay tuned. Patchwork Heart Ministry is committed to sowing hope into broken hearts by helping young people encounter the love of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church through prayer, storytelling, and media initiatives. We invite you to prayerfully consider supporting this mission financially. Mail your tax-deductible donation to Patchwork Heart Ministry at P.O. Box 563 Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, zip code 53147. Or visit patchworkheart.org to donate online. That's Patchwork Heart Ministry, P.O. Box 563, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, 53147, or online at patchworkheart.org. 
Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network present Hear Your Faith, a brand new audio subscription service that features a growing collection of uplifting Catholic audio choruses, talks, and other exclusive content to help you grow deeper in your faith and knowledge of Catholicism. Subscribe today at patreon.com slash patchworkheartministry. At times it seems like the world today is filled with so much division, bigotry, and hatred. So it's up to us to make sure that we get back to the basics, and that is Jesus Christ and his message of faith, hope, and love. Faith, Hope, Love with John and Morgan Bender is a new project that seeks to do just that by engaging and inspiring Catholics within the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and beyond. Read personal faith stories, interviews, and news all by visiting the Faith, Hope, and Love blog.blogspot.com or follow us on Twitter at Johnny Bender MKE. The St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith offers prayerful accompaniment for those who are affected by divorce and separation. We offer free online support meetings for those affected by divorce and for adult children of divorce. You can learn more about us at nonatus.org. That's N-O-N-N-A-T-U-S dot org. Text or call 215-870-9913. Your heart is always beating, but you never have to think about it. Welcome back to Young Catholics Respond. Once again, Bill Snyder. Hey, everybody. Welcome back here to Young Catholics Respond. I am Bill Snyder, and uh, today my guest is my uh, friend and co-host of uh, Sewing Hope, Anne DeSantis. She is also the, um, the director of the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation, which has a very special focus, and that focus is to uh, help families who are in crisis. And uh, I thought she'd be the perfect guest to discuss this topic with me today, uh, not only because we're friends, but because of the work she does in reaching out to those in crisis. And man, isn't our country in crisis right now? We're dealing with, um, as, as I've shared a few times at a hashtag on Facebook, uh, virus and violence. We're, that's what we're dealing with as a country right now. And it's, and it's very, very difficult, um, you know. And so, therefore, uh, we, we just need to uh, be, be people of, of faith, of, of witness, um, out there in our in our homes, as we talked about, and in our in our world. And so, uh, Anne, I know uh, you have some amazing quotes from um, the treasure trove of saints that that uh, are in our church, and uh, both some that some that are living and some that have passed away uh, and are living in heaven. Um, and and so, why don't you just share with us some of these quotes and and some of these. Uh, you know things so that uh, we can just gain a different perspective on on, on what's happening and and um, you know these the, the 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 heavenly perspective sometimes helps us uh, see with God's eyes exactly how and and what to do in these difficult situations. That's right, heavenly perspective because uh, all of us as humans, you know, we're here for a given amount of time on Earth and uh, living out our virtue and not vice. And Bill, I think right now what we're seeing, unfortunately, because of the virus and violence, maybe not so much the virus, but the violence for sure, uh, we're seeing people acting out of out of vice. Now, not so much the protesting, but the violence that happens uh, afterwards, some of the rioting and such that has destroyed uh, businesses and people's lives, livelihoods. So yeah. um, I'm thinking of St. Teresa of Calcutta. Because, you know, as Catholics, we are called to be missionary disciples. Doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, uh, where you are in your state of life. We are all called to this. And Mother Teresa has said, St. Teresa of Calcutta, at the end of our lives, we will not be judged by how many diplomas we have received, how much money we have made, or how many great things we've done. We will be judged by, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was naked and you clothed me. I was homeless and you took me in. And unfortunately, right now we're seeing that people are losing uh, their homes. They, you know, I know that in my the Philadelphia area where I'm from, 
in West Philadelphia that one of the supermarkets there was completely destroyed by the looters. And now many of the people in that community don't have a place to shop. So they have to drive or walk or take public transportation miles, miles and miles away just to get food. Yeah. So it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it is. And, you know, that that's the injustice that 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 is compounded, you know, by 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 somebody's uh, s- sinfulness, you know, uh, by a group of, you know, and, 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 and it's not just one person. This is we're talking about the the collective um sin or the or the corporate sin of of societal violence like like this it is of course you know on each and every individual but when it bands together and it you know and and groups of people participate in this in this sin of 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 violence um what ends up happening is stores get destroyed you know it's it 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 might go from your home to a supermarket to a town, to a you know to a city, like we, like when you're thinking about what one human heart that is that, that is that that gives way to sin does, and then it latches on to all of those others that have sinned together, it just becomes this destructive force. It becomes this destructive tornado that goes through and and hurts society. And as you pointed out, right, like you think about that grocery store that's destroyed, uh, not only is the owner, you know, without his business, but all of the employees that have been, you know, considered frontline workers uh, serving people during this pandemic, making sure that they have enough food on the table, making sure that they're able to get, you know, uh, essentials into their homes, all of those workers now have lost jobs because they can't work in a destroyed store. And then you have um, all the people, as you mentioned, that have to now travel, right? They have to travel to a different store. And some of them maybe not have the, maybe they don't have the means to travel right now. Maybe they're out of work. Maybe they can't, you know, afford as much, you know, money for gasoline and things like that because of the pandemic. It's all compounded. This stuff is compounded, and, and and it's sad. It's so sad. And so I I I think you know, following the example of of Mother Teresa, yeah. How do we now go serve the? How how do we serve those people? How do we rise up? How do we become, you know, Catholics on the front lines? Now is a time to rise up. Now is a time to serve. Now is a time to be, um, you know, heroic, and um and 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 serving the poor and helping those in need. And yeah, there's a lot of people in need. I agree with you completely. And I've said what I'm going to say now many times on our other show. And for those who are listening, we have another podcast called Sewing Hope Podcast. So just check it out sometime. But I say this often, Bill, and maybe you even know what I'm going to say, that part of catechesis, you know, as, as Catholics, catechesis means really knowing your faith, the catechism of the Catholic Church, understanding and living it out, right? Yep. And there's many facets to that. But one of the greatest and biggest facets of it is what we're our reaction to something like what is happening right now. You and I have a decision. Okay, do we want to just be rule following Christians or Catholics? Meaning, yes, okay, I'm not stealing, I'm not, you know, go down the line. I'm not doing this that or the other. But am I being proactive to be the person that God made me to be? Am I helping the poor? Am I listening to people who need to hear uh, a good word? Am I trying my best to live out who I am as a, as a Catholic Christian? You know, St. Teresa of Calcutta said, if you can't feed a hundred people, then just feed one. I mean, that's something that we can all do. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's somebody in your neighborhood. And maybe feeding them doesn't necessarily always mean giving them actual, you know, food, but being a good listener. Maybe it's uh, praying for them or doing a little errand. I don't know. I mean, only you know who are listening what you can do to help others and not feeding into the negativity and the hatred. But I would encourage you, one of the things that we can all do, if there's somebody right now in your life that you're at odds with, I don't know who that is. 
Is it a family member? Is it somebody from your past? Is it somebody from your past that you hurt some in some way? I mean, you have no idea. And, and I, I believe this, that what the words, I'm sorry, how far that can go to someone to change their life. Somebody that we all know needs to hear, you know what? I'm really sorry about that. Even if it was a few years ago or whatever it is, think about it. But it's yeah. one way that we can all make peace. Yeah. You know what? I, I, I really think that you uh, pointed out a great truth of our faith in there too, Anne, because, um, you know, we talk a lot about sin of commission quite a bit. You know, the things that we do, you know, to offend other people or God. Uh, like you said, you know, you know, maybe I'm not out there stealing. Maybe I'm out there murdering anybody. Maybe I'm not out there, you know, living a promiscuous lifestyle. What, whatever, whatever that might be. Uh, but then we also talk about the sins of omission, right? Uh, and those sins of omission can be just as great as the sins of commission. So uh, we really need to think about that in our, in our lives. And, you know, when we, it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden, folks. It really goes back that far. Um, you know, he, Eve might have been the one that, that took the bite of the, bite of the fruit off the, off the tree, but Adam did nothing to stop her, right? And so, and so men and, and women need to rise up during this time and, and put an end to those who are uh, committing large corporate sin. Large corporate sin has to be put to an end by faithful people, by faithful Christians, faithful Catholics, that rise up and say, you know what, there is no more of this. There is no more of this. We are going to enact just laws. We are going to um, work to bring peace to our homes, to our communities. We are going to open churches so that we can foster this environment in our hearts and in our world. And, and this is where the leadership of both our church and also of each individual Catholic that is out there listening, each young Catholic that's out there listening to this right now, each old Catholic that's out there listening to this right now, has to rise up and do something, and do something about it, uh, whether that is helping your neighbor, uh, s- sweeping up the street after a uh, violent riot, uh, I've seen that happen on the news quite a bit. There's been a lot of people that have come out of their homes uh, a few days after these businesses have been destroyed here in Milwaukee, and they're just helping people clean up broken glass and and uh, and and repair broken shelves, and you know get things in order. This is what we have to do as Catholics. This is what we have to do as Christians. So, and uh, I want to thank you so much for um, your your time here. Uh, on Young Catholics Respond, and as always, I look forward to being with you on Sowing Hope twice a week. Uh, so thanks for giving me an extra show this week, and um, and yeah, go ahead and uh, give us uh, make, make make sure uh, people know about the resources at the Saint Raymond Anatus Foundation too, as we kind of wrap up here today. Bill, thank you, and thank you everyone for listening. It's been such a pleasure, and I do invite you also to watch um, or excuse me, listen to our other podcast, Sowing Hope. Sowing is spelled S E W. ING Hope Podcast with Bill Snyder and myself. And to connect with me at the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation, just go to nonatus.org. And as I spelled it earlier, N O N N A T U S.org. Uh, you can even email me if you have a prayer intention. My email address is director.srnf, as in Frank, <laughs> at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Yes, awesome. Well, uh, until next time, from all of us here at Patchwork Heart Ministry, I am Bill Snyder. Keep beating to your Catholic heart. You've been listening to Young Catholics Respond, a radio initiative of Patchwork Heart Ministry. To learn more about our ministry and program, visit us at patchworkheart.org. Or to get exclusive access and early ministry updates, become our patron on Patreon by searching for Patchwork Heart Ministry.